Hello and welcome to this instructional and plan video brought to you by BI. Today we're going to talk about conditional formatting. Conditional formatting in Anaplan enables you to color code line items where formatting depends on the values in the same or in different line item. Formatting of the same module could be independent in the module view or in a dashboard. Moreover, if a dashboard contains multiple grids based on the same module, each could be formatted differently. Conditional formatting is a very powerful and visual way that allows you to underline specific cells of data and could easily be tailored to your own specific needs. Now let's switch to Anaplan and see how conditional formatting works. For the purpose of our example, we're going to use this module, which contains several customers and several products. We have one line item here, the forecast units for April 2017. Say we would like to color code the forecast units in such a way so that we could easily identify where we have more or less units. We can easily do that by applying conditional formatting. In order to do that, we have to go to the menu here above and find the conditional formatting button. After we press it, we need to add a new rule by pressing the new rule button. When adding a new rule, there are several things that need to be specified. The first is the line item we'd like to format. In this case, it's only the forecast units. Secondly, we should specify the line item based on which the formatting is going to work. And a plan is going to give you the same line item by default. Then we need to choose between the two or three color scale. For our example, we're going to use the two color scale, and then we can choose the two colors. In this case, I'm going to choose white to green. We need to specify the minimum and maximum value. Let's go with 0 and 100. In this preview below, we can see that the minimum value is going to be in this color, in white, and the maximum in this color here, in this green, and all the values in between are just going to be a mixture of both with different shadings. When we press OK, we have added this new rule. If we press OK once more, we're going to enable the conditional formatting, as you can see. With the specified minimum and maximum value of the color coding, we can see that only the values 60 and 40 have different conditional formatting. This is simply because all the other values are above the maximum value and they are going to have the maximum value for the conditional formatting. If we'd like to change that, we can go to the conditional formatting menu again. And this time we're going to choose edit rule. And I'm just going to set 1000 for the maximum. You can see on the preview below that the scale has changed. When we press OK, we have managed to change this rule. If we press OK, it's going to be applied, and as we can see, now it's much easier to identify the large values. In our second example, we're going to see conditional formatting based on the values of a different line item. I'm going to explain this functionality before we start with the conditional formatting. Here we have the same forecast units, and we have the functionality to override them. When we press the override button, we should add the units to override, let's say 400. Then we should add some justification. And finally, when we have added both the units override and justification, we are going to see that we have the final forecast units. If the justification is blank, we are going to have the initial forecast units and the justification cell is going to be in red. If we have the units override equal to zero, this cell is going to be in red. The reason is that we would like our users to see that there is some action that needs to be taken. Now I'm going to remove the conditional formatting and show you the line items I've created in order to do it. I've created two different line items, which are going to be the basis for the conditional formattings 
of the units override and justification line items. Let's see the formula in this one first. Essentially, it says that if the override box is unticked, it is going to be zero. If the box is ticked and there is a value different than zero in the unit override cell, it is going to be one. And if the override is ticked but the value is zero, then it's going to be two. It is quite the same for the justification formula. In here, if we have the override ticked and there is no justification, it is going to be number two. If there is some justification and the override is ticked, it's going to be one. And if the override is not ticked, then it's going to be zero. The reason why I have three numbers is because I'm going to be using the three color scale. I'll have white if the override tick box is not selected. I'm going to have red if either justification or unit override is empty. And yellow if there is a value in the justification or unit override line item. And the reason why I have yellow here is because I would like my users to see that some of the products have been overridden. Now let's see how the conditional formatting here works. We're going to select the conditional formatting button and we're going to add a new rule. I'm going to choose the units override first and then I'm going to select the units override formatting line item as the basis for my conditional formatting. I'm going to choose the three color scale and we're going to go with white through yellow to red. The minimum value is going to be 0, the midpoint is going to be 1, and then the maximum 2. So in this case, it's going to show as white if it's a 0, and it's going to show in yellow if it's a 1, and it's going to show in red if it's a 2. Let's press OK, and let's see if it works as expected. You can see that in this case, we have ticked the override selection box, and we have not added any units override. So in this case, it's red. But if we add a value, 120 say, it's now in yellow. We're going to do the same for the justification line item. We go to the conditional formatting menu, we add a new rule, and we select the justification line item. We're going to base its conditional formatting on the values of the justification formatting line item. Again, we choose the three color scale, it's going to be the same one and we add 0, 1, and 2. We press OK. We can see that it works as expected. If the override tick box is not selected, it is in white. If there is some justification and there is override, it's in yellow. And of course, if there is an override, but we have no justification, it's in red, signifying to our users there's something that needs to be done. Finally, let's try and publish this module on the dashboard. I'm going to hide these two line items and I'm going to publish it on our dashboard. In this case, we can choose to edit or change the formatting by going to the top left corner, finding the arrow, and going to format, then conditional formatting. Here we can edit the rules, add new rules, or delete them. What we're going to do now is publish only the final forecast units line item, and then I'm going to apply different conditional formatting on it. This way we have two views of the same module, but we can apply different conditional formatting. I'm going to use conditional formatting based on the same line item and it is going to be the same as we started with. Press OK. We can now see the final forecast units with this conditional formatting. You can see that we can publish the same module essentially as many times as we'd like on a dashboard and every time we can add different conditional formatting. In conclusion, conditional formatting could be a very powerful way 
to underline specific data cells. By applying the appropriate conditional formulas, you could build complex formatting tailored to your specific needs. For more information on conditional formatting, you can visit Anaplan's Anapedia. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great day! If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.